Is this you? You're scrolling on Instagram and up pops some sick illustration of the most badass creature you've ever seen and you're thinking, well, gosh, that's pretty cool. I bet that I could do that. So you throw everything off your desk, smack down a piece of paper, a couple pens, and a glass of room temperature milk to create your masterpiece. And then silence. A bead of sweat trickles down your temple and your butthole clenches. How the heck do I draw from my imagination? So you give up and do another portrait study of some Instagram model you've liked one too many pictures of. Well, listen here, buckos. Today I'm gonna teach you lint licking doohickeys just that very thing through the most intense vigorous training of your whole dang life but since it's the holidays and all i thought mama would give you kids a sweet present for being such a bunch of good little artists and what's in the box today why it's a dragon it's a freaking dragon now you might be thinking why a dragon Seems like a pretty basic fantasy creature, but I actually think it's a perfect example on how to dissect animal anatomy so that we can make a new creature. Plus, dragons are just objectively rad as hell. One of the most interesting parts about dragon anatomy is where it's drawing inspiration from. We think of dragons as reptiles, which is true, but if we take a look at the body shape of D&D's red dragon, it actually has no real reference to any reptile I can think of. Lizards, alligators, tortoises all share a similar splayed out body and are usually low to the ground. Where the dragon reference its anatomy from is actually feline. In fact, Toothless from How to Train a Dragon leans into that for comedy by making its whole demeanor similar to a house cat. So why would they pick a feline archetype for a dragon? Well, in opposition to a house cat, we want to create a creature that is both an apex predator but feels eternal, wise, and regal. What other animal is perfect to reference from other than the king of the jungle themselves, the lion? Just one correction, dragons are also inspired by dinosaur anatomy but things like T-Rexes have similarities with like bird arms and legs. When studying animals, we wanna get away from all the nitty gritty details and crazy anatomical forms by breaking it down to simple things like the head and the spine, rib cage and pelvis, and then break up the arm into a shoulder, upper arm, lower arm, and then the paw and fingers. Likewise with the legs. This is what we call comparative anatomy, where we can find similarities in how all animals are built. And once we understand that, we can use this knowledge to create our own imaginary creatures by distorting anatomy, stretching and squashing forms to create different feels and proportions, maybe using a smaller shoulder and larger forearm, or maybe stretching out the limbs to make the creature feel ganglier and faster. There's a variety of different things we can come up with. Challenge your imagination to come alive. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of busting out a fully realized digital painting, I thought in the theme with the video, I'd push towards the more creative aspect of doing art. For me, this is where I personally derive the most fun while doing art. Getting to flex my looser, more creative muscles gives me that sort of childlike joy I got when I was doodling on my math homework when I was a kid. I feel far too often there's a huge focus on fundamentals and technical skill that artists get lost and start hating their drawings. So often I'm browsing through art Reddit pages, Twitter, and I see so much struggle between artists and their work. Don't get me wrong, I'm constantly doubting myself as well, and the art journey is hard. But the one thing I always remind myself to do is to get silly with it. Now I don't know if these are the best designs in the world, but getting the chance to explore the possibilities, especially with fun ideas like this eel dragon, it's what I'm here for. I hope you can see where I'm taking these really simple constructions of body parts and how without being a master of anatomy, I can still push really fun and interesting ideas by just pushing and pulling the proportions of the form. The greatest thing is I don't even need to use reference for these, so I can bust out a few designs to see where my imagination can take me. There's nothing wrong with using reference. I start a lot of projects with mood boards or visual ideas, but by learning how to simplify forms into easy remember shapes, it allows you to place these down quickly and focus on finding fun visual cues in your design. And honestly, this way of designing a bunch of dragons on one page can be a fun creative exercise in itself. I have absolutely no plan of a composition with these guys, so I have to work with the space given to me and find the overall shape and gesture of my good boys in a way that can fit into the composition. Especially with this demon dragon, I knew I had to squeeze him into that small cramped space so I had the perspective turn his pelvis back into the page and designed him with the intention of being blockier and stubbier. I don't know, I also just have a thing for a real snub-nosed creature look. I love my chunky dudes, what can I say? 
It's funny, because I think we like to think of dragons as such a typical fantasy creature, but I find them able to get really different vibes out of all these guys. I think there's something to be said about giving yourself a limited archetype to work through the bounds of. It's like, I know this guy, he's Ted, he's my neighbor. He brings me his famous lemon bars every day and they're delicious. But then one day, Ted has the bold idea to show up to my door in a sequin layered suit and some bomb Korean pork tacos. And I'm like, holy moly, this is my friend Ted? So I feel comfortable, but now he's showing this side of him that has me intrigued. Good on you, Ted. It's a bold look and I love that for you. That's what dragons are to me, comfort food. That can knock your skippies off when presented to you in the right way. And come on, look at that cute little baby dragon. Doesn't that just make your little Grinch hot believe in the holiday spirit? Anyways, as I said, I'm not planning to do a full on digital painting for one of these guys. I just wanted to brainstorm some fun designs. I did want to add color though, mostly because there's some aspects of the eel dragon I really wanted to showcase through color. The idea for the eel dragon came from the underbite jaw and the long neck. But I also really wanted to see a dragon with a cool patterning that you only really get with sea creatures. Maybe I'll work on a sea creature next video. I'd love to hear what y'all would be interested in me drawing. I've got a couple ideas up my sleeve, but I'm always reading the comments for suggestions. In fact, this dragon video kind of came out of a comment from at ShadowLugia18011 suggesting a Tarask. I don't know how to pronounce that. I thought it looked sick, but I didn't want to do another rock creature. So I thought a dragon had that dino energy that I wanted. Baby, baby, big dino energy. So here's my dragons. I hope you enjoy them as much as I did making them. Here's to the new years and all that. Hope you all had a fun night at debauchery and expect more videos soon. Reese's Pieces, y'all. Mm -hmm.